This next one here is the track for the F1 competition every year that they have. Every year, every four, I don't know what I'm talking about. I should not speak anymore on that, but this is Monaco. So they have the F1 competition. I really should know what that is. I don't, oh my God. to another YouTube video. My name is Carter. You are at the Currently Carter YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I talk about all things luxury, luxury investments, and how to make your closet into an investment portfolio. So if that's a bit of you, stick around, subscribe, like this video, pretty please. It really helps out a brand new channel like mine. Okay, let's get into today's video. It's gonna be a good one. So today is all about the Louis Vuitton Passport holder. Guys, this is a big topic we talk about a lot and has turned into quite the thing that has unified us all. <laughs> we love doing it together as a community and chatting about it. So I'm going to go over all of the questions that I get on my DMs, all of the rules, what this is, how it works, etc, etc. So if you're brand new to Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton has these things called stamps. <laughs> and every city has its own unique stamp. So what that means is you can only get these special Louis Vuitton stamps if you are traveling to that city and you go to the Louis Vuitton store that has that stamp. If they're big cities, usually all of the Louis Vuittons will have the stamp. If they're smaller like cities or for instance, for example, like Texas, Dallas has the Texas stamp and Houston does not. So I, they might've changed that by now because there's so many complaints on it. <laughs> but just for example, that's pretty much how it goes. So if you're in a smaller city, then you wanna make sure you're going to like the flagship of that area and not just like any and everyone, but if they're like big travel cities, all of them will have it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you all of mine in just a second. So I started this collection after my biggest sort of like world tour of like Europe and the UK. And I don't even know how I got this idea. I have to have a good thing on it. I'm trying to remember. I think maybe I just had like the spark of the idea whenever I found out about stamps and really got my first stamp on this because I think I bought this and I was chatting with my essay in Houston when I used to live there and he did the first two on this and I think I just like sparked the idea that I could like continue that and and like get more and more stamps as I travel I think that's how it started I'm trying to remember but all of us are haunted by all of the places we've been and we didn't get a stamp <laughs> so if you are new to traveling or you're just starting like your traveling journey and you're getting all like the list of different places you want to go do this now because we are all haunted <laughs> by all the places that we've been before and never got a stamp. All right, so that being said, there's quite a few places I've been probably like 20 something at this point actually that are not in this book which is so upsetting but that's okay because now I just have to go back to all of those places and get the stamps. <laughs> so I will give you a sneak peek of all of them before I walk you through each one and what they are and go over all of the details on how to do it. As you can see there's quite a few. There is one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different cities and two, three that are stamps that you can just get anywhere or two of them you you can get anywhere. I think one of them is special, but yeah, I will go over all of that. I think this also kind of derived from the fact that I have a lot of other kind of fun rituals that I started sharing on my Instagram that I do while traveling. One of those things is I buy a fragrance everywhere I go. Every like change of country, I'll buy a fragrance in that country. And then what you do is you spray it as much as you can throughout that trip. And then when you get back home, whenever you spray that fragrance, it's an instant memory trigger for that trip. I started doing this because I did it on accident. I bought Rose de Vence from Louis Vuitton in Paris and I moved to Paris for the summer. And I, so I just accidentally sort of just sprayed it all the time because it was the travel size in my, per, in like the travel little uh, like automizer thing that you can buy from Louis Vuitton, right? And I went through like almost three of those vials. I think you get four and I went like through three of them just in that summer. And when I got back home and I sprayed it just because it was in my purse, it was like 
so cool because it was a completely different kind of memory trigger. It's like, I don't know, scent has such a strong connection with memories and a smell can bring up a totally different sort of feeling than just you remembering, you know, traditionally in your mind. And so I loved that. And ever since then, I purposefully buy a specific fragrance for the trip. And then when I get home and I spray it and it's just so fun, I love doing that. And so I shared doing that on my stories on Instagram and then a bunch of you guys started doing it too. And like, we all love it together. That's kind of a fun thing I do. Another fun thing that I do when I'm traveling is instead of buying trinkety things to as like fun memories of the trip, you know, a lot of people buy like shot glasses or like spoons or whatever. And that's so cool if you collect those. I love that. I love collecting things like that. I do do a little like trinkety thing. Like I go to the Starbucks and I'll buy like only there's only because like Starbucks has a lot of different kinds of series. <laughs> it's like actually uh, uh, like insane. If you look it up, there's like so many different collections that Starbucks does. And I collect the collection that's like the black and white cups and their only colored part on the cup is like the little traditional thing that that city has. For example, like London has a red bus and then Paris has, I think the Metro is green or something like that. Anyways, so yeah, I do collect those and that's like a fun trinkety thing. But instead of just like other trinkety, you know, magnets or whatever, I will buy a decor piece for my house. And that way, instead of going to like Home Goods or Target or whatever, and buying that random decor piece that doesn't really mean anything, but it's like to fill a space on your coffee table or whatever. I'll do that from a country. And then that way I'm filling my house with like things that I bought specifically from places that like otherwise would just be like a random, you know, decor. It doesn't necessarily say anything about Paris or Monaco or whatever, right? But from there and it fills your house with things that you like remember and have like a purpose from buying and it creates like a fun, you know, story if you're chatting in your house or whatever. So anyways, I've been doing those those two things for a while and thus started my third and final ritual that I do when I'm traveling and it is the Louis Vuitton stamp book. Okay, so first and foremost, this. You will notice this is not a traditional passport holder. It's taller and skinnier than the traditional passport holder. This is the pocket agenda holder. It's also less expensive than the passport holder by like, I think a hundred bucks or something, which is quite exciting and a fun little hack because your passport will fit perfectly in here. But a bonus, it has these right here, which are perfect for essay cards. It's something you definitely want to collect if you are in like the luxury game and you like buying things that retain their value and appreciate over time. They and you want to collect cards as you go and you get an essay, let's say you go into Louis Vuitton in, I don't know, Italy, right? Then next time you go in, you can like text that essay, right? Because you have their card in here and say, hey, I was here however long ago. You were so wonderful. I wanted to meet with you again. And typically you can skip the line that way. You don't have to wait in line again because you already have an essay contact and they will set up like a private whatever for you. Okay, so all that being said, I bought this actually for two reasons. One, because it's a bit of a hack. It's cheaper than the traditional passport holder and you can use it as like a notepad. You can use it for a lot of other different things besides just a passport. If you aren't just like keeping it on your passport all year round, you can like use it as an agenda. You can use it for other things. And then whenever you travel, your passport also fits inside, which is super useful. There's something in here right now. Essay cards, love it. Laura Piana card and oh yeah, Etro. I, I popped into Etro because my handle broke on one of my bag and I was asking if they could fix it. Anyways, the other reason I bought this is because it has a lot more real estate to actually get stamped. The traditional passport holder, I'll put a picture up here, it has these very skinny bars here where your passport just sort of fits. And that means that whenever you have your passport in it, you can't see any of the area that you could actually stamp minus these two little bars here. And this gives you all the space in the world. The other reason I love this is because your passport folded, right? Like you don't have to put each like slide in over here and like let it open like a book. You can just put your whole passport in like this closed on one side, like right on this side and then the other side I have all my essay cards and then I close it like that. And that way I don't have to faff with getting it out every time I bring it to the border control and I can just like slip it out, give it to them and slip it back in, which is like just easier and handier. Let's go over all of my stamps. This stamp right here, as you can see, is Cancun. I got this in Mexico. That is the Cancun flower or the Mexico flower that they have. Next right here is Frankfurt. 
Germany, which I absolutely love. All of the German cities have the skyline in that circle. So the skyline changes, but it's the same sort of shape and everything else. The skyline changes and then underneath it'll say Munich or you know wherever. And this one says Frankfurt there. Underneath we have Texas. I got this in Dallas. I'm in Dallas all of the time. I was born in Dallas actually, fun fact. This next one here is the track for the F1 competition every year that they have every year every four I don't know what I'm talking about I should not speak anymore on that but this is Monaco so they have the F1 competition I really should know what that is I don't oh my god I do know what it is I just can't think of it now that I'm on the spot it's like I'm, I really can't think of it anyways <laughs> so yeah this is the racetrack that goes around Monaco which is very cool next right here we have St. Moritz St. Moritz is the tallest city in the Swiss Alps. Absolutely love it. This is like the sort of mascot of St. Moritz and the animal that is like home to a lot of the mountains in the Swiss Alps. And then underneath it here is London. So excited to finally get my London stamp. I got this on my very last trip to London and I've been to London many times before that and never got the stamp. So I was so happy to finally get the stamp on my passport holder. The the one above that in between St. Moritz here, this is just a traditional one that you can get anywhere. It's a little bouquet and it has little motifs of Louis Vuitton on it. This one right here is the Vivian doll that you'll see. It is kind of the mascot of Louis Vuitton. It's a collector's item. They have little dolls and different things. A lot of people collect those and that was just a bit of a fun one. These two started the whole thing. There was nothing on it, just these two. And that's what I got in Houston whenever I bought this. He kindly put those on for me. And then let's see here. Over here is another one that is not specific to a city, but is absolutely my favorite one in the whole world. I am a huge cat person. I'm really just a huge animal person. I like animals more than I like people. I'm the girl that like greets your dog before you. I am that fully embody that. <laughs> so yeah, I love this one because cats are very much my animal and it is the little coin cat that I think it's like an altar cat and then they put coins. I am not versed exactly on what this is, but yeah, it is, I think traditionally Asian culture, I want to say. It has a Louis Vuitton here. It actually started coming off and an essay in Louis Vuitton in London re-stamped it for me, which is kind of a big no-no. They typically will not do that if something starts coming off. And I I convinced her and I love her forever. Thank you so much for doing it because it's my favorite stamp. And you can see it is still starting to come off a little bit more, which I hate. I think it's just because it bends right there and like I use it like it touches my finger so much. So that's a bummer. Across the page here we have Dubai and you'll see if you look close that the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the whole world, is made out of Louis Vuitton trunks which is so, so cool. I absolutely love that one. It's one of my very favorite ones. Next over here is Rome, and it is, of course, the Colosseum. Love that one too. Above it here is Paris, and again, you'll see the Louis Vuitton trunks, but this time in the Eiffel Tower. Absolutely love that one. Up here is Rome again. I did get two stamps in Rome because I love that this one had a little airplane. This is the one that is specific to the Louis Vuitton in the Rome airport. There are very few full Louis Vuittons. They'll typically have much smaller, very curated little spaces. And Rome is one of the very few ones that has a full on Louis Vuitton boutique with like full collection. And they have their barely owned stamp because of that reason. As you can see, it has the airplane and there's like a huge airplane in that boutique. And so I thought, ah, I'll do another one here just because I loved the airplane. And it says Roma on it as well. And the Colosseum doesn't have any like reference for where it is. Obviously it's the Colosseum of course, but it doesn't like say Rome or Italy. And I liked this one did. So I got another one. Also originally I was quite worried that this one was eventually going to kind of fall off. You can't really tell on camera, but there is quite a lot of cracking to it. It does add to the charm because it just looks like the Colosseum. But at the time I was really worried that it was gonna fall off eventually because the guy just did it really quick. So yeah, but anyways, and the very last one I have right here is Aruba. And this tree is very special to 
a ruba specific, I don't know what they're called, but trees growing on the island. So yeah, that is the full tour of the stamps. Now let's get into the most frequently asked questions for this. All right, let's get into it, guys. This is the tea on how to make this thing work. First and foremost, the biggest asked question is I went in to get a stamp and they told me that I can't have more than one stamp on a leather item. Yes. Technically, that is correct. Technically, Louis Vuitton does have a rule that you're supposed to have one stamp per item, meaning like one luggage tag can have one stamp on it, right? That is typically traditionally the rule. Now, here's the deal. Not a lot of essays know that. Technically, they're called CAs in Louis Vuitton, by the way. Essay is a very general term, essay, sales associate. CA is what Louis Vuitton calls their sales associates, and it's stands for client advisor. So if you want to be politically correct, you would call your Louis Vuitton like person that you work with the most. We refer to them as a CA, just as an FYI bit of information. So yeah, not all CAs know that, first of all. And then second of all, a lot of them know it and just don't enforce it because it's a bit silly. And especially they're not going to try to like ruin your fun if you're doing something like this, where you're collecting all the stamps from the different cities. Most often a CA will actually ask me if they can take a picture because they find it so cool and they're so excited to be part of like my journey. So I get that reaction much more than I get the other, but it is a good thing to kind of know in the back of your mind that that is a rule and you're aware of the rule. The only time I ever get pushback from that is typically in a flagship store of the city. For example, like London. London has a flagship store on Regent Street, I believe that it is. Is it Regent Street or is it Bond Street? Anyways, whatever. They gave me a lot of flag. London was actually the first place that gave me flack for it. Okay, I shouldn't say that. London wasn't the first place. I've gotten flack before. That store was the very first store I've ever had an issue in. If I ever have like a question, a lot of times they'll ask their manager and typically I'll say like, yeah, would you mind? Would you mind asking or would you mind? We'll just bring them over and, and I'll ask and I'll explain to the manager, you know, what I'm doing and I'll be very kind typically, which kind of leads me into the next thing. I'm not going in and just straight up asking for a stamp. The other thing that you very much want to consider and typically I find that kind of throughout. I don't usually go to the main flagship store of that area. Also, flagship is not really being used in the right way here. Typically flagship stores are the very first store of a brand and therefore been named the flagship store. They're the first. I'm using it in a sense of meaning like the main store of an area just because it's easier to explain, but that isn't technically correct just so everybody knows. Yeah, so we'll call like the, the main store that is not a part of a another shop. For example, there is a Louis Vuitton in Selfridges and then there's a main Louis Vuitton on the street, the big store, the biggest store out of all of them, right? So the that flagship main store is the only one I've ever had like an actual problem with. And I do see that commonly if I ever do have an issue or there ever is a question, it's typically only ever in the flagship store of the area. I think that's for two reasons. A lot of times your very seasoned essays are allocated to those stores and the newer essays are typically in the stores that are within a larger store for instance the Louis Vuitton in Selfridges and this is a very generic you know assumption so I do not know that this is for sure but I get that sense whenever I go in most of the CAs in the flagship stores are like aware of the rule right because they've been around a lot longer and they've been like maybe under more scrutiny in training because they are at the flagship versus Selfridges a lot of times they will be transferred in from maybe be already working at Selfridges or already have been working at the store. That's not all the time. This is again an assumption, but just from me gathering information, that's sort of kind of where I feel like maybe the discrepancy is, is that they're just a lot more strict in flagship stores than they are maybe in stores that are connected to other box stores. Now that's not to say that I got a ton of stamps in flagship stores. I absolutely have. Most of the time, if someone is aware of the rule, then they'll just say like, oh, I'm not sure sure if I can. I say, oh, absolutely. I don't want to get you in trouble. If you don't mind, maybe just we'll ask your manager and that way they can approve it for you or, you know, or whatever. And I'm super kind. And also another thing that I very much want to point out is before I ever get to that conversation, I've been shopping in the store. You do not ever want to come in and be like, hi, I want a stamp. No, <laughs> because there's a couple things you really want to take in consideration. One, there's typically a line, right? And the essays are trying to 
sell as much as they can for the store overall. So they're not very much interested in not making sales. A lot of times they don't necessarily make commission off of the sale, but they do need a quota for the store, if that makes sense. So you just want to be cognizant of that because you're taking their time. And if you're only coming in for a stamp, then you're very easily like only taking their time away from making their quota. You know what I mean? So typically I will go in and even if I'm like totally not interested in buying anything right away, I will look at things that I might be interested in buying in the future, like shop around if something just doesn't work or I'm just not re you know very ready to get it or whatever. I'll ask for their card and then I'll like, you know, say that I definitely want to buy it. And if I am going to buy it, I'll buy it from them. Right. And that's a big one, right? If I'm asking for their card because they're going to make the sale later on because they spent that time with me, it's me respecting their time for like showing me that item that they're going to get the sale at a later date. Now, a lot of this is, you know, a bit of a game, right? You're being kind, but genuine in the sense that you are going to be interested in something later. Most of the time I buy something small, like a perfume, because I'm already going to buy a perfume anyways for that area or that trip, whatever scarf, something that I'm already interested in that I really like. I'm not just buying something to get a stamp at all. I just genuinely buy from Louis Vuitton, right? There's plenty of these stamps. I've bought absolutely nothing. And then there's like several of them that I've bought something, right? So I'm just telling you kind of the full backstory, right? So you have the knowledge of kind of the behind the scenes before walking in. Then at the end, or maybe in the middle, after I've like been looking at some things or whatever, I will bring up the passport holder. I said, also, before I forget, I'd love to see your special city stamp. And then I will show them like a prize because look what I have. And I'll show them my passport holder and they'll be like, oh my gosh, look how cool, right? Again, I'm not aggressively asking for a stamp. I'm not like here, you know what I mean? I'm saying, look what I have. And they'll be like, oh, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And like instantly will look at all the places that I've been and it's a bit of a conversation starter or whatever. And then they'll show me theirs. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Like we could put it here or whatever, right? And it's very fun. Now, two things will happen. They're like, oh my God, yes, they're totally in right away. Or they'll say, man, there's actually a rule that you're not supposed to have more than one. So like, that's so cool that you have so many of these or whatever. And I like, oh yeah, like I've heard of that. I don't think that's really enforced everywhere. Like it's, I think that's, you know, sort of a novelty rule or whatever. And if there's still a bit of pushback, then I'll say like, oh, absolutely. Well, if you don't mind, I'll show your manager. So that way you can get like approval and I don't want to get you in trouble. They'll be like, yeah, if you don't mind, whatever. And then I'll do the same thing to the manager and I'll just explain again, I've already been shopping. I'm very kind. I'm not pushy and I'm like easygoing, right? With the whole thing. The only time I've ever walked out without a stamp was London that one time. And it was the most recent time. So I've done 12, 13, 14 different times without that ever being a problem. And honestly, I had terrible customer service in that London store. It was horrible. I don't think I've ever had worse customer service in Louis Vuitton besides that main London store. I think it's on Regent Street. Horrible. And then I go into Selfridges, have the best Louis Vuitton customer service experience I've ever had in my entire life. Taylor, you know who you are. I love them to death. I chatted with two of the ECAs there for like such a long time. I have both of their numbers, Sean and Taylor. I literally remember like they're just gems. If you ever go into Selfridges, talk to one of those two and you will have guaranteed the most wonderful time. I cannot wait to go back to London and like just shop with them as much as I can because they were delightful. But yeah, anyway, so if it's a problem, like you go to another Louis Vuitton, you get the London stamp right away, zero problems. You know what I'm saying? That's the first question. This is such a long winded video. I really have to wrap it up. I am talking way too much. I want to give you guys all the details though, you know? I think that pretty much covers all of the most asked questions. The biggest one I get is the size of this, the fact that it's not the traditional passport holder and how I get past the rule of there only being one per item. I feel like there's not any other ones. If you have any other major questions, absolutely leave them in the comments down below. And if you've made it this far in the video, I absolutely love you. Thank Thank you. Do the little trunk emoji. If you have lasted this long in the video, I absolutely love you. Thank you so much for being here and not clicking off so much. I know I am like talk so much. I gotta like wrap it up. I'm a talker apparently. I didn't know until now. That's a lie. I knew. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so, so much again for watching this video. So with that being said, pretty please like this video if you would. It really helps out a small channel like mine. Like I said, if you can't like it and you don't have an account, I swear to God, go get just literally put in your email you don't get a million emails
emails from YouTube. You can easily just do like a fake email, whatever, and it will change your life. I didn't have a YouTube account for the like, longest time, right? I never could like subscribe or like, and I accidentally did it one day, like without meaning it. Changed my life. I swear, you start subscribing to people, you start liking, and it is so much easier. I know a ton of people don't have YouTube accounts and that's why they never like or subscribe, but I promise it's worth the five seconds that it takes to do it. Get an account, subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos, and you can always do the little bell and that way you get notified every time I upload. But don't worry because I upload every single day. I upload unboxings or these videos or travel vlogs, so it's definitely worth sticking around. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!